get the expedition papers? They should all be in order. Your bosses must be in a real hurry to get him back to Canada. What'd he do? He's wanted for perjury. Apparently, he was a key witness in a murder trial, and he changed his testimony on the stand that resulted in a mistrial. Is he here? Huey and Louie are bringing him over from lockup. I hear he's quite the character. He got pulled over for running a red light and tried to convince them he was taking a shortcut in the Cross Canada rally. If he'd kept his mouth shut, they might have never called INS. Hey, Lane, can you find out what the weather's like in Florida? Do I look like a travel agent? Hey, Benny, you ever been to the Sunshine State? Well, I can't say that I have, Ray. Yo! You guys want to move? We want to find out what fine Italian footwear tastes like. Thank you kindly. I just hear that it's the rainy season. I don't want to get all the way down there and get stuck in some kind of monsoon or something. Ray, I thought you'd used up all your vacation time. No, no, no. This is not a vacation. This is a plum just waiting to be picked. You see, the district sends one detective from each division to go down to Miami to listen to some lecture on uh, advanced weaponry, and I plan to be said detective. So it's assigned on the basis of merit? Oh, it's assigned on the basis of who can suck up to the lieutenant the most without making it obvious. Cappuccino, sir. What do you think of this shirt? What, that? I think you look pretty silly in it sitting behind your desk while I'm in Florida. Sorry, pal. But this little baby here is my ticket to fun in the sun. You know, it's strange you guys mention Florida because my family has a home in the Keys. If you want to use it, let me know. Shut up. What do you got? What do you got? Orchestra seats to my boy. Ah, I'll send you a postcard. We'll see about that. So you really thought you could uh, get this assignment by sucking up to me, detective? Oh, no, sir. A man of your considerable intelligence would see right through that, sir. Decaf? Uh, no, sir. Oh, thanks, anyway. No problem, sir. I just happen to be passing the espresso bar on the way to work, sir. Where can I find an espresso bar in a 10-block radius? No, there's a small one. That's All right, great. You got them real Cuban cigars. No way. How'd you get your hands on them? Let's just say one of the girls in the evidence room thinks I have sensitive eyes. Really? You have a moment, sir? Bitch, is this a burner? <laughs> oh, hey, come on, man. He didn't mean it literally. What you looking at? What's your problem? It's just that I had these two tickets to the opera, and uh, I thought I might be out of town tomorrow night. Oh, it's very generous of you. Do you smoke cigars, sir? You're gonna think this is a very strange coincidence, but... Uh... Cubans got Dino. <laughs> you boys wouldn't be in any way trying to influence my decision on which officer makes that Miami. No, absolutely sir. not, sir. No. Right, because uh, I make it a rule to disqualify any officer who gives me an expensive present of any sort in the last month. I mean, just to avoid any appearances of impropriety. Right. You understand? I have a reason to suspect that uh, these are uh, domestic, sir. Really? Yeah, where it says Havana, uh -huh. if you look closely, the Ink is smudged. Actually, the ticket's the 20th row, sir. Matinee. On the other hand, the cigars look real to me. Pardon me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Watch your back. Watch your back. Thank you. All right, man. Tell me the truth. I got a deadline. Detective Ewing and Gardino. Were you escorting a prisoner for extradition? Uh, yes, sir. He's a. Uh, I, I hate to say this, sir, but I believe my partner didn't handcuff him properly. It's your cuffs, you ferret-faced little... Hey, hey! You guys misplaced something! Detective Vecchio, have you caused a riot yet this morning? Not that I'm aware of, sir. Good. Gardino, give me your shirt. Woo! I'm going to Miami! <laughs> drive down there, one day at the lecture, and two days to drive back. That's five days out of which three I gotta spend on the beach. Ray, Miami is 1,387 miles from here. That's 26 hours driving time each way. Okay, so at 120 miles an hour, that's 13 hours. I save a day. 
Uh, yes, I need to fly to Detroit today, and I will be transporting a prisoner. Frazier, you do not need to tell everybody everything. Five days notice? Uh, no, I wasn't aware of that. All right, well, thank you very much for your time. Ray, do you think you can drop us at the train station on your way? You know, you are wasting Canadian taxpayers' dollars, okay? Because you're going to get me there, they're going to take one look at me, they're going to say, you got the wrong guy, and then they're going to let me go. Don't talk to him, he's calculating. Okay, so at 95 miles an hour, how long is it going to take? I can't tell you that, Ray. It would recklessly endanger the lives of thousands of motorists. Okay, so say 90. Good morning. Constable Benton Fraser, RCMP. I called earlier to inquire about transporting a prisoner to Windsor, but your lines were busy. You want to transport a prisoner? Morning for train robbery, murder, one, and escape from maximum security prison. Well, I can't very well gag him, Ray. Fraser, this man is not your problem. He's an accused felon and a compulsive liar. I am an innocent victim of circumstance. Shut up! You know what your problem is, Fraser? You can't go around compulsively telling people the truth. They just don't want to hear it. They see there, I'd have to disagree with you. Shut up! Hey, Bank of Illinois. My dad owns that, you know. Well, part owner. I mean, you orchestrated the whole deal, to tell you the truth. I mean, the Rockefellers used to own it, then they bought it. But I'm telling you something, that has been one hell of an investment. Because in the mid-60s, there was a little bit of trouble there. But I'll tell you, right now, with the EC and everything going on, he's really doing well. Shut up! Well, I explained the situation to him, and he was extremely helpful. Did he rent you a car? No, but he doesn't have any. What do you mean he doesn't have any? There's got to be 100 cars in this lot. Unfortunately, they're all reserved. I didn't realize Spiro Agnew's birthday was that widely celebrated. Also, I thought it was in November. You know, my mother had an affair with Spiro Agnew. It was all hushed up, of course, which is why they wouldn't let me in secret service. This is a 1971 Mint Condition Buick Riviera. You know, Ray, you really don't have to do this. I'm sure I can find someone who will lend me a car. How many people have we asked? Well, uh, basically everyone I know. It does seem rather curious that they've all decided to leave town at exactly the same time. It uses top octane fuel, 20 weight oil. Ray, this is silly. How are you going to get to Florida? I'll fly. It'll be worth the 600 bucks to get rid of you. Are, are you aware that the gas tank in this particular make of car explodes on impact? You want to ride in the trunk? Ray, you know, I appreciate this offer, I really do, but you have some kind of special bond with this vehicle. Now, I'm not saying I understand it, but I do respect it. Shut up before I change my mind. Now, in the care and operation of this vehicle, there is one thing to remember and hold above all else. Never, I repeat, never use the lighter. Of all the original parts in this car, it was the most difficult to replace. It took me seven years to find that lighter, and since I've owned it, it's never been depressed. Then how do you know it works? I know in my soul. Do not adjust the passenger seat, open up the glove box, or use anything other than the preset radio buttons. I'll take good care of your car, Ray. Don't worry about a thing, really. One final piece of advice. The man sitting across from you is a felon. Accused, accused. Do not trust him, do not talk to him, do not listen to him. And most of all, do not think of him as a human being. Think of him as a parcel that needs to be delivered and you will be okay. Do you understand? I'll do that, Ray. And have a nice trip. Thank you, Ray. Thanks. Bye-bye. Oh, uh, uh, Ray, uh, what's the best way to get to the I-90 from here? Oh, don't worry. I know. I'll show you. I'll show you. Thanks, Ray. Bye-bye. to Miami. Ray, this really isn't necessary. Just answer the question. 1,314 miles. Okay, we dropped the guy off. You take the bus back, and I'm only four hours behind schedule. Well, not quite. Uh, four hours and 20 minutes. We still have to pick up Diefenbaker. They left Chicago in the cops' car. A green 1971 Buick Riviera. There's a plate number. No 
I'll be taking the interstate. We should get to them before they reach Battle Creek. Thought I told you to pay him. I tried. We wouldn't take Canadian. What do we have left in the cooler? Sandwiches are for later. Well, can I have a pop? My hands are cuffed behind me and I'm strapped into a seatbelt. What if we get into an accident? Shut up! I think we're lost. Are you sure you know where we are? Yeah, halfway between freedom and incarceration. Now, you keep your eye on that map. I want a state-by-state -state countdown until we get to Winnipeg. Windsor. Yeah, like there's a difference. Damn, I should have brought the snow chains. Do we really got to cross the border? Yes, Ray. Although, you know, I imagine they'll have a dog sled at the bridge in case we should get stuck. See? That's some kind of facetious Canadian humor. <laughs> the kind of thing that must really knock them dead up around a bait house in Newfoundland. Sorry, Ray. <laughs> <sighs> Would you back off? Get, get off me. What are you, what is he, deaf? Yes. You know, I think he feels sorry for you. He senses you're in some kind of trouble. He'd like to help. You see, wolves have a very difficult time understanding the idea of incarceration. Undo my seatbelt. Yeah. But they do understand the law, don't they, Deepin' Vic? <laughs> so, Ray, once you drop us off at Windsor, your trip to Miami should be fairly simple. You take Highway 18 west toward Leamington and catch the ferry. Ferry? Is Florida on an island? No, this is the shortest way across Lake Erie. You know, you might want to call ahead for the schedule. What's a schedule? Like a schedule. It's every hour on the half hour. I'll phone. And then you get on the 250, travel 109 kilometers. Kilometers? Look, Fraser, when we cross the border, you can start talking in Canadian. Until then, let's stick to English, OK? You know, Ray, actually, it's, it's quite simple. Converting kilometers to miles, you simply multiply by 5 eighths. So 109 kilometers would obviously be 68 and an eighth miles. Well, strictly speaking, it would be 67.69 miles. But still, the 5 eighths rule is a very handy general guide. You know, I know the guy who invented kilometers. And then from Milan, which parenthetically most people tend to mispronounce as Milan, you would stay on the 250 through Norwalk and... I go south, okay? That's all I need to know. I go south. I have to go to the bathroom. Well, you can go in Canada, Ray. You know, I understand. You know, my father used to hate this stuff. I remember once driving through Peru to a peace conference in Machu Picchu. You know what, McDonald? I don't think you ever had a father. Were you driving from Ayacucho or from Cusco? Actually, no, from, from Lima. Oh. How fast are you going, Ray? Not fast enough. We go a little faster. Those kids in that bus were laughing at us. It's one of those little short buses. I think I'm already speeding. These stupid road signs. What's 60 times 8 fifths? 96. State trooper traveling in the westbound lane. This is the US of A, Frazier. Cops do not ticket other cops. Now just keep your eye on the map. A sign. Oh, I gotta drive! Some people, huh? Well, perhaps they weren't expecting someone to come up behind them at roughly 93 miles an hour rate. Right? Hey, isn't that what defensive driving is all about? Assuming that the other guy's gonna do something stupid? Whew, that did it. My kidneys are gone. We have to find a washroom. We don't have washrooms in America. We have restrooms. The minute I see a sign that says washroom, we'll pull over. What are you doing? Well, I, I thought I'd read That's this. That's the original manual. Do not open that. You've never read this? No, I've never cracked its spine. I cracked my spine once. No one's listening to you and no one cares. Punctured a kidney, which is why I need to... Shut up, which is why you need to shut up. We'll stop when we need gas. Oh, we're going to stop before that. Want to bet? Yeah, you have a real nice day, too. I'm starting to understand why people hate cops. Just doing his job, Ray. Is it too much to ask that a person be allowed to relieve himself? Look, you and I both know you're just stalling for time. If you really had to go, you could have gone back there. I've already lost 20 minutes of pool time. We're not stopping. Is this the original upholstery? It's really quite simple. 
To convert from miles to kilometers, you simply multiply by eight-fifths. So the 55 mile an hour limit obviously converts to 88 kilometers per hour. I appreciate the warning, officer. You folks have a nice trip. Thank you, officer. <laughs> nice folks, Canadians. You hear such stories. This really is not a conducive atmosphere for what I'm trying to accomplish here, okay? Uh, perhaps if you tried running the water. Do you have helpful hints for everything? It's really not my fault. I I've got a bit of a shot. <laughs> you guys getting hungry? Forget it. Oh, come on. I haven't eaten since the lockup. I know my rights. You have to feed me every six hours. Yeah, well, it's only been five. Six. We passed the time zone. That doesn't count. Frazier, you tell them. Well, actually, Ray, the legal scholars seem to be fairly equally divided on this point. One argument extended to its logical conclusion would provide that if you were traveling west at a rate of speed high enough to cross one time zone every hour, then you would never actually have to feed the prisoner. That is, of course, until you cross the international date line, at which point you would have to force the prisoner to immediately consume four meals. Now, the contrary position, All right, you got 10 minutes to eat unless there's a time zone between here and the counter. I don't believe this. I've been looking for this place for 15 years. My dad and I used to come here all the time. That's our booth, right? That, we, that was our booth. Yeah, well, from now on, we'll call this our counter. Grab a stool. This is it, officer, right here. I don't know how it happened, really. I mean, uh, one second, it was just fine. The next thing you know, his throat just closed up on him. I got lucky because I just managed to puke it up all over the table. Look, 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 look. There's still pieces on the chair right there. Sir, take off your pants. You're sitting in evidence there. Um, he's not telling the truth. No, we, we have no need for your pants. Perhaps I should follow him and tell them there's no danger. Well, send him a postcard. Come on, let's sit down and eat. Hello. Yellow. Yo, miss. This place hasn't changed a bit. See, my dad was a sales rep, so three, four times a year we had to go to South Bend. Oh, miss. Excuse me, miss. Uh, miss. Yo, yo. So we leave the kitchen at the crack of dawn. By the time lunchtime came around, I mean, I was starving. And, you know, you'd always want to stop someplace else, but I'd say no. I wanted to wait till we got here because it's like our place. Curious. If you'd taken the interstate, I would have thought you'd be here in about five hours. Frazier, the man is lying. It's just another story. You want to do something useful, throw a flying tackle into the waitress the next time she passes. Hey, can we order here? They make the best pancakes in the world. They used to have this turntable right in the middle of the table with six different types of syrup. Air conditioning, blasting. The syrup was always warm. Odd. The windows face north. You boys ready to order? No, let's go straight for the check. What's the fastest thing on the menu? I'll have the blueberry pancakes. No pancakes. Well, of course you have pancakes. Do you see pancakes in the menu? Right, hamburgers all around. Look, do you think you could ask him to make me some pancakes? I, I used to come here when I was a kid. Then you'll know we'd never serve pancakes. You want everything on them? Yeah. I hate pickles. Pick them off. I'm telling you, it was Alaska. It wasn't Alaska. It was Nebraska. It was Alaska. It was yellow and shaped like a polar bear and said Alaska. Alaska is golden no, blue. No, it's the not. Northwest Territories is shaped like no, a polar it's bear. If you two don't shut up, I'm pulling the car over right now and I'll shoot you both. I got him. This better be Illinois plates on a Buick Riviera. Yeah, at the restaurant. That's good, Norman. Nice work. You better eat that burger, because we're not stopping again. I had a hiding space down here. I used to flip out the baseboard and leave stuff in it, you know, toy soldiers and marbles. Are you telling that story for my benefit? Because A, I don't believe it, and B, I don't care. They must have fixed it. I don't think this is the place you're looking for, Ian. Yeah. That's it. Who cares, you know? You remember when you said the syrup was always warm in the afternoon? That would indicate westerly facing windows, which would mean the highway had to run north and south. The most direct route to South Bend would have been Highway 12, a slower road, which would have put you past Hillsdale by approximately one o'clock. Now, if I recall from the map correctly, that highway dips south about 60 miles west of that community. So actually, Ian, I think you're off by about 45 miles. Do you believe everything people tell you, huh? 
How do you get through a day? Did I tell you he was yanking your chain? My mistake. after the car. State police post in Battle Creek. Forget it! Ray, we have to report this. Look, Frazier, there must have been a dozen people back at that roadhouse. I guarantee that somebody called it in. If we go in there, they're gonna keep us there for hours making out reports. Ray, they opened fire inside a restaurant. We can't weigh that against a couple hours driving time. Okay, here's what happens. We go in there, they call Welsh. I don't get to go to Florida, and you don't get your prisoner to Canada. Still, I, I think I see them. All right, look, we can't just pull up and start driving around in circles and looking for help. I mean, how long do you think it'll take them to catch up to us? Well, if we keep going in a straight line, we're not exactly going to be difficult to find. Oh, they're behind that truck. I think they turned right. Where? Back there. Those who want you dead, excluding the immediate occupants of this car? You wouldn't believe me. That I believe. They're rogue Mounties. The RCMP does not want me to testify. Well, I don't think they can be Mounties, Ian. The man in the hat appears to be in his mid-50s, so he would have had to join up when height requirements were still in place and would have narrowly missed qualifying. His nickname is Stumps. He chased a guy into a lumber mill and lost three inches off his legs. Here, don't slap him, shoot him. All right, fine. You want the truth? You heard about the Basque Separatist movement? Next! All right, fine. You want the real truth? Here it is. Those guys are part of the Canadian mob. There's no such thing. On the contrary, Ray, organized crime is a growing problem in Canada. Oh, yeah, what are we talking about here? Conspiracy to commit jaywalking? Organized littering? The guy in the hat? Danny the Bull Brock. One of his guys sticked him on a counter. He took him into an alley and shot him eight times. Was that one time with eight bullets or eight separate times? Because in America, after the third trip down the same alley, we start to get a little suspicious. I happen to be looking out my window into the alley. Yeah, what, all eight times? Hey, I saw him do it. So the cops found out they made me testify. Oh, and I understand you. You wait, don't tell me you lied. Look, these guys can get you anywhere, okay? I was protected around the clock, and I still managed to find a note under my pillow. So I fingered somebody else, except that he happened to be in jail at the time of the murder. Yeah, now that was very entertaining. So what's your next story? We're being pursued by plain clothed Toreadors? <laughs> Ray, this road isn't on the map. It's going east. That's all I need to know. All right, now here's a little trick that I'll teach you to drive his head. Where are they? Where are they? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? I was 
driving instructor once. Shut up. All right, now you two rock back and forth when I gun the engine. No, 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 you're just digging yourself in deeper. I'm afraid he's right, Ray. than it really is. My shoe! Mother Nature just ate my shoe! You want me to get it for you, Ray? No, what I want is for us to get out of this ditch, oh. drop this psychopath off, and drown my sorrows in coconut milk. This is what I want, okay? This is what I really want. And a flip-flop. Okay, you two push it out and I'll rock us out of here. You're taking me to jail and you expect me to help you out? I don't think so. Just get back there and push. Well, we can't actually make him do that, Ray. Forced labor is against the Geneva Convention. Yeah, well, somebody's got to push and somebody's got to drive, and I only got one shoe. I'll drive. The hell you will. Uh, suit yourself. Right, Ray. All right, all right. We'll push it out. Did you expect me to drive like that? Yeah, but not too far. All right, on three. <laughs> Broken. They probably doubled back, son of a... I said three! My foot cramp. All right. Oh, Ray, look. Look, I think I found... All right. I think we should have enough traction here. Okay. Let's try it again on one. You better do these things. You can go to hell! Breaker! I want my leg out! tracking device on the car. If we don't get to him fast, they'll find him, they'll kill him. It's not gonna happen, Frazier, because I got first dibs. Go find my shoe. Um, about your shoe. I got him. They're heading north. How many mint condition 71 Buick Rivieras are left on the road? Almost none. This man stole something from me that is almost irreplaceable. And easily identifiable, which means he can't use the freeways. He knows Brock is after him. He has to assume we'll have put out an APB. So his only option is to find some place to hide until dusk and then travel at night. Well, that narrows down a search for every barn, garage, or haystack in the greater Michigan area. Every barn has a farmer, Ray, and every garage has an owner. Without time and friends, it's not that easy to find some place to hide. He's wanted on both sides of the border by both sides of the law. He's got nowhere to run. If he dents it, I'll kill him. My father said something that's always stuck with me, Ray. Your father never shut up, did he? He said a man with no future will always run to his past. And when did this come up, Fraser? Were you sitting around at breakfast when he came up with these things? Or did he come running into your room and just blurt them out? Ray, there's no need to be sarcastic. No, I'm just curious. How did he work these things into everyday conversation? Did he say, son, did you see the size of that moose? And by the way, a man with no future will always run to his past. Ray. I'm sorry about your shoe. I thought you didn't want it anymore. You know what my father used to say? A man without a car is nothing. And I don't want to be nothing anymore, Frazier. It's hard on my socks. You went that way. Why? Does a man with no future always turn left? No, he's gone to find the pancake house. There is no pancake house. It's a lie, just like everything else that's come out of his mouth. I don't think so, Ray. People tell lies for a number of different reasons. Because they're ashamed, because they're insecure, sometimes because they're in trouble. But they always hope to gain something from their lie. Money, prestige, pity, sometimes even freedom. And his story about the Pancake House, he stood nothing to gain by it. He told it because it's true. He let us see a little glimpse of who he really is. 
And then he got angry because we saw that. That pancake house exists. It may be the only place around here where he feels safe. I think he's gone to find it. I bet he used my lighter. All right, here we go. Need a lift? Oh, yes, thank you. Not you. Which way are you going? Well, we're traveling together, ma'am. Did you? I'll go without him. Not likely. Too bad. If you ever get to Miami, just ask for Rhonda. You see that? Women always judge you by your shoes. Well, I don't think she was sincere in her invitation, Ray. I mean, how could a young woman possibly be known by her first name in such a large city? Frazier, your father taught you nothing. You know that? OK, enough is enough. I'm the law, and I need a lift. Uh, Ray, I don't think he can possibly read your badge from this distance. Whoa! But I could be wrong. Well, they can read this. Ray, brandishing a weapon is not going to encourage motorists to come to our aid. Fraser, look at me. I have one shoe. I am covered in mud, and I'm standing with a wolf and a guy dressed like who knows what. No one in their right mind is going to stop and give us a lift without the threat of deadly force. Hey, you folks stranded, eh? Canadian? Go on, eh? How'd you know? Now, we're officers of the law, sir, and we're pursuing an escaped perjurer. We'd very much appreciate a lift. Hey, well, hop on in. Thank you kindly. It's a sick country you have, Fraser. can't see when you point in the back seat. Left. Here? Yes, here. Uh, it would be a pancake house off Highway 12 near Hillsdale. Well, we're headed for a mall right near there. You have such wonderful malls and estates. Yeah, they mapped out the whole route on our home computer, eh? <laughs> Three states, six malls, one day. Oh, goodness, will you look at that? More stranded motorists with guns. Floor it, buddy! Floor it! America's just getting more violent all the time. Yeah, it's television, eh? That's why I like our fine Canadian programming. You guys need some help? Sarnia, drop by. Thank you kindly. Thanks. Fraser, if I'm ever in Sarnia, shoot me with a big gun. Will there she is. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. They hurt you. They hurt you. I didn't even see anything. I'm sorry? In the alley. I was in my apartment. I just didn't look out my window. Didn't see anything, didn't hear anything. But you told the police you did. I came around looking for witnesses. I was there when it happened, so they said I must have seen something. Couldn't help myself. Look at this. I, I thought I, I'd stash something valuable here. You know, some uh, money, some jewelry. Look at this junk. 
You know, we would travel for hours to get here. He'd say maybe two words to me. Then we'd get here and he'd give me some money and tell me he'd be back. He left me here for hours, sometimes overnight. You know, the only reason that he took me was so that my mother would know he was cheating on her. And she would always ask me what we did, where we went, and he would tell me what to say. Now, she had to be the most gullible person in the world. I mean, I could have told her that we went to the moon, and she would have believed me. Not too bright. She thought I was going to be somebody. I think that she would be proud. What do you think? Is that why you said you'd seen the murder? To be somebody? Look, I'm just telling you an amusing anecdote. This is a very, very sad story, my friend. Hoping maybe you would feel sorry for me and let me go. But I'll tell you something. <clears throat> you do have to appreciate the irony of the situation. I mean, I tell a lie and say that I saw Danny the Bull do it, and I go free. I tell the truth, and I saw absolutely nothing. And they're never gonna believe me. I'll go to jail for perjury. That's the story of my life. Dead, but don't have really poor visibility. Okay. I'll cover. You go out the back door and circle around. No, there is no back door. Yeah, like I'm supposed to believe that. You're right. I'm on their side. Any ideas? The only access are the side and front windows, and they have those covered. You know, Ray, if you could lay down enough withering fire, I think I can make it to the car. I only got one bullet left. That's all we're gonna need. You yeah, have we can get them to line up straight. No, no. When I was flipping through the service manual of your car, I discovered that your gas tank is only 11 inches from your rear fender. You opened my manual? Only for three seconds. Now, one bullet surely can penetrate the tank and spark an explosion. I was right. Yeah, luckily, you'll both be taking that information to the grave. What we need to do is get the other two close enough to be hit by the explosion. Well, there's two guys behind their car. Why can't I just shoot it? Well, I didn't read their manual, Ray. I can get them to the car. Oh, yeah, like we can trust you. Look, I was just offering to help. If you don't want me to, fine. Oh, feeling a little remorse, are we? A little guilt for leaving us stranded out in the middle of nowhere to freeze to death? Well, it's too late, pal. God can see right through your feeble attempts at redemption when you think that the end is near. Trust me, it won't do you any good. Can't you speaking from personal experience? Look, I haven't done a whole hell of a lot in my life that benefited anybody but myself. And for once, I was going to do something to help somebody else. Forget I mentioned it. I got tears in my eyes. The only problem is, you and I both know if we let you out, you cut a deal with them to let you go and get us killed. I don't think so, Ray. I think we can trust them. No, you can't. Yes, we can. Is there no other way? No. Although, you know, maybe it would be easier if I shot your car. No, 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 I can do it. No funny business, or I missed the car and aimed straight for you, Gabish. Mr. Brock, it's Ian. How you doing? OK, here's the deal. I come out there with the car keys, and you let me disappear. I just go in. I don't testify. They tell their bosses I escaped, and everybody goes away happy. You think you can live with that? Let me think about it. Dump him in the trunk. OK, Ian. As soon as you get close enough, you dive for cover, he'll shoot. Okay. Of course, you know, if you'd rather that I shot the car. Just get out the door.
getting closer. It's almost there. My hand is shaking. Right now would be quite a good time. You alright? Yeah, yeah. I used to be stunned at for a while. Just to stop at the customs booth, I'll explain the situation. Yeah, we do this all the time. Just let me do the talking. You know, nothing to declare. Well, 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 I, as a matter of fact... Get out of the car, please. I think there was a short in the electrical system. Uh, no, I'm fine, sir. Well, it may take some time to find some of the parts, sir. Trying to decide what you're going to do? Between lying and going to jail, uh, that's a tough one. It is, actually. You can keep deceiving people so they think you are somebody, or you can be somebody. Everybody needs to be somebody sometime. There was a person your mother thought you could be. What do you think he'd do? Trouble with them? No. Okay, let's get on the road then. See in a few years. Way to get back on the highway. Oh, don't worry, I'll show you. Make a left. Ray, I think we should have turned them over to the Canadian authorities. Hey, if they want them, they can dig them out of an American jail. Come on, stick out your thumbs. You certain all the rental cars were taken? Hey, don't blame me. I never heard of your damn maple syrup day. I'm sure it's this way. Make, make a left. Now I got straight ahead, straight ahead. Directions on this map, but you're only going one way. Do 